when we see or hear about yeah. snakes, it means taboo to talk about snakes. But in Hindu, we talk about it many times. My name is Donna Michelle St. Bernard, and I'm a co-creator with Tamika Bullen of this project in defense of the serpent. This started as an evolution from another collaboration that we did together that was extremely Donna-centered. And we thought we'd have another go with uh, more Tamika in it. We started just exploring. We talked a little bit about snakes and the way that um, Hindu culture perceives or, or uses that imagery differently than that's typically used in um, Christian folklore. And that became uh, sort of the, the center of the project. And so then we started meeting with each other and exploring uh, different ways to communicate with each other without the assistance of ASL interpretation. And then that became sort of a core part of the project. Two years later, my mom dreamed of the same cobra. It took the omen I would be born in 1979 as a girl. The process of working together with Tamika is one of constantly learning and inventing and reinventing things. Um, I'm a little bit stubborn. Oh, that's one of the things we have in common. We're both a little bit, a lot stubborn. And so we insist on working through certain barriers that um, could probably be easily solved with something that you could buy. Um, but in addition to um, physical accessibility, we're also a little bit interested in financial accessibility. We've wanted to work in ways that are affordable when we don't have the support of the institution. So one of the interesting things about working this week is bringing in our we don't want anything aesthetic and then blending that with the um, with abundant support from Theater Pass Marai. Indra giving us an outside eye, that's something we have not, we have not had before on this project. Um, Christopher adding some tech elements and Indra and Bilal coordinating to, um, to supplement the story with these other vocabularies, these other digital or otherwise vocabularies. Showed us what parts of the story we didn't need to labor to, to deliver. Hello, my name is Tamika, and this is my sign name. Because of my hair, I have ringlets, I have curls. I started working with DM back in 2017. DM wanted to work with a deaf artist. Um, I believe he wanted to work with a deaf poet. She can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think... We met and then, well, DM contacted me via email. I'm getting old, I can't even remember the details, but DM emailed me, contacted me, asked me if I was interested in working with them, and I said sure. And so DM and I started working together in 2017 on a poem, and every once in a while there were other performances that came along. And then one day DM and I decided that we should make, we should put together our own show, our own production. And we wanted to talk about the black experience with hearing and deaf perspectives included. So we thought it would be unique to have a black perspective from a hearing and a deaf perspective. We didn't think that there was anything out there until we thought that this would be a very unique project. So it's very exciting. Uh, we're, we started the process. We wrote a script together. Um, this, we haven't fully completed the script. We're still in the draft stage. But we're moving along in the process. When DM and I started the project, uh, we didn't have any interpreters. Um, we didn't have any interpreters, so there was a lot of writing back and forth and texting, and there was communication, but the communication wasn't the most smooth. English is my first language, and so there was a few misunderstandings from something that DM was saying versus what I was trying to express. And so we struggled a little bit with communication, but we struggled and, and we got through it, and we came to a mutual understanding around uh, a lot of the things we were talking about. We used Skype. They actually have a vo voice recognition, so DM doesn't necessarily have to type. They can, she can act, they can actually uh, use the uh, use the feature in Skype with the voice recognition. Usually, when I have uh, different productions, I usually have interpreters that I work with. And this was one of the first times that I've ever worked with a hearing artist that didn't have an interpreter. As I said, English isn't my first language, so it was a bit of a challenge. Um, trying to figure out how we would communicate. 
Mm. So how deaf people and communicate with, you, with each other isn't necessarily the way that hearing people and deaf people mm -hmm. communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting in terms of working with English, working with text-based communication, all of those things. So far, we've been very patient, but also stubborn because we won't give up. We want to continue to work together and work through the process. I'm really enjoying working with DM. I'm happy to have a project that's challenging. With, without the ASL interpreter initially, it was definitely challenging. It actually gave us ideas for the next part of the script, how we're moving forward in different scenes, how a hearing person without an ASL interpreter in the real world, how they wouldn't communicate with a deaf person. You don't necessarily have access to an ASL interpreter 24 hours a day, seven days a week, hanging out with you. Unless maybe you're incredibly wealthy and you can bring in someone to work with you all the time like that, but that's generally not what happens. So that has given us some ideas on how to move forward in writing our scenes and, and continuing on with the script. So the script still needs a few more revisions. Like I mentioned, we're still at the draft stage. We're experimenting with new technology, and, and it's been fun. I'm really enjoying it. I really am. We're actually going to do like a, okay. like a Q to Q kind yeah. of thing. I love it. But, you know, just for the first three scenes that we worked on, and then, and then we'll continue, working. continue working the way we were. Is that okay, Chris, with you? Absolutely. I'm no scientist, but the theory of evolution suggests, I'm pausing for one second to let you know, my preference is to speak very quickly. I'm going a little bit slower than normal. I'm going to speed up closer to my normal speed and you yeah. let me know if it's too fast, okay? Thank you. I'm no scientist, but the theory of evolution... For me, the experiment is an ongoing rolling success because it's hard and we don't give up. And Part of the difficulty with any kind of um, accommodation, accessibility, interpretation, um, even across spoken languages, is that people feel that the cost is prohibitive. And so I think a lot of creators and producers just don't engage with people because they perceive there to be a cost attached to that. And um, I think that sometimes it's an expense and sometimes it's just stubbornness and stick to itiveness and um, yeah, and that's what we have. So I think that we are successful in persevering, and it's something. We're getting there. from foreign to get rid of all the snakes who were from there to make an environment more convenient to settlers. Nobody planned for the rabid mongoose problem, for their omnivorous resilience and reproductive prowess. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you about coffee all the time. I keep showing the sign for coffee, but you still don't know that word. You yeah, still don't know that word yet. I guess not. Why not? Can you write, please? No, learn how to sign. I don't know ASL, I'm sorry. You're not trying. Can you cut me some slack? 
Maybe I'm too stupid to learn. You're not stupid, you're lazy. I do not like that word. Well, I'm writing so much, my hand is cramped. I can't write anymore. Do you want some coffee? Yes. Fine. I like the first moment where Tamika signed and DM was voicing. I found so satisfying mm -hmm. My, uh, uh, because it was together you were telling mm -hmm. the story. So that to me was really like such a satisfying thing. Um, Sorry, I'm just, uh, that makes me feel like that moment should come later then. Maybe, but it gave us a taste of that. Yeah. I, see, I see the journey towards trying to reach that communication and then where where does that break? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or where does it reach its point of? Well, yeah, there's a big fight coming. Huh. Right. In real life, that we yeah. went to the cafe, and I, I think that that was a big moment for us. And we tried to communicate, and we wrote back and forth. And you know, there were so many misunderstandings. Remember, we just we just weren't in line at mm -hmm. the restaurant or something. We had sat down and we tried to communicate with each other, uh, but we did misunderstand each other a lot. It got emotional. It was frustrating. Um, you know, so I guess it was that kind of experience. Uh, two other things that I really identified with uh, as a hearing person in. Uh, attempting communication. One is the speech to text and the frustration of the speech to text not working <laughs> uh, as well as you would like it to work. Um, and what I interpreted in that moment was uh, because DM's text was quite advanced, I think, mm -hmm. uh, or like have, you have a good vocabulary that the speech to text can't keep up with. Um, <laughs> So seeing you be, for lack of, well, disabled by the technology uh, is quite satisfying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing that I, I also just identify with a lot is the, the labor of writing back and forth, which is what I'm usually in, in uh, as a hearing person communicating with deaf people um, or typing back and forth or whatever. But that tedious process that everyone knows yeah. is insufficient, but it's kind of the thing that we end up doing. When there's text and there's silence, I'm always reminded of my desire for sound. You know, I'm always just like, oh, but maybe we should put some music, you know, spice things up. But I, then, then, then it makes me think about how I'm being put in a position to not be listening with my ears, mm -hmm. right? Like that, yeah. I'm being asked to use uh, uh, my other senses and yeah. that that is displacing me and my privilege with my ears, mm -hmm. right? So that seems intentional to me and I like that, that, it's, that it's silent and it's forcing and it's like that awkward silence where it just goes, you know what I mean? Because yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. interesting to stand in on stage as well. Yeah, because you're you want like that has not been sound for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of our design conceits that's like not practical for Buzz that is something that I think both would like to have is um, opt-in sound design, so that the way that you use audio descriptors uh -huh. for vision impaired audience members, that we would require hearing audiences to call ahead and book yeah. if they want sound design mm -hmm. with their play. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we, we touched a bit on it, but I think we can talk about this tomorrow. Yeah. Um, in terms of your process, and if after this week of having like three days without an interpreter, and now two days with an interpreter, what is how you would like, and how that maybe affected also creating the mm -hmm. when you had interpreters versus when you didn't, mm -hmm. and how. You want to be intentional about not having interpreters or having except when we do, mean? we do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like what are the times where you're like, no, 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 like this we cannot move forward unless this is in place. And then times when you're like, no, 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 we actually need this yeah. space, you know. So that's that's a conversation. Yeah, about to make us have something that you and I can sleep on yeah. and tomorrow maybe have some ideas about what parts of the process we felt needed interpretation and what parts we feel are inhibited by that. 
C'est bon. C'est bon. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for all your hard work this week. Let's get out of here.